This is the new iPad Pro 12.9 inch XDR, and this is the new 11 inch iPad Pro. The 11 inch retails for 800, and the 12.9 inch retails for 1100. Now we also do have the white keyboard here that we'll be talking about later in the video, but that retails for 350, meaning if you do get this new combo here that has the XDR display along with the new white keyboard, you're looking at around a minimum of 1500, a little bit more with the Apple Pencil. So this right here is definitely an expensive combo, but what is the difference here between the two? Well, of course the 12.9 is a little bit bigger and there is a $300 price difference between the two. The accessories for the larger iPad are also more expensive, but the main thing is really gonna be that XDR display because both of these have the M1 chip. They both have this new feature Apple is calling center stage. So really not much of a difference between the two, but we'll get into why that XDR display isn't a reason to get one over the other a little bit later in the video. First, let's talk about what's in the box of these. You aren't really gonna get anything special, just the USB-C 20 watt charging block along with the USB-C cable, documentation, and some Apple stickers. I did get the new Magic Keyboard again, but we'll check that out a little bit later in the video to show you and tell you some more about the white color. Now, as far as specs go, it's very straightforward. We have the new M1 chip inside of both of these, so these are gonna be plenty fast. So fast, in fact, that these tablets are almost overpowered at this point. There's really nothing we can actually use here to really bog these tablets down. Apple software itself is very limited. We can't really just multitask anything. We can't drag any window around. We can't really do much here. And I feel like that would be really, really good, especially with this M1 chip, because you'd be able to maybe window a game and play a game, or while you're waiting for your turn in Hearthstone, do something else. It'd be really cool to get true multitasking in the same sense that you have in the MacBook, MacBook Pro, etc. Because in that, you're not really tied to that one window that you're in. There's a lot of cases where in the iPad, you actually are tied to that window. And with the M1 chip, that is almost pointless. We can be running so many things. So if you do get this, know that the M1 chip isn't really going to come in clutch right now, but it's definitely more of a future proof thing. And talking about future proofing yourself, we do have a Thunderbolt port or now just, I guess, Thunderbolt support because this is just a USB-C port, but now Thunderbolt works on this. If you don't really know what that is, well, it's for some accessories that are just quicker. So there's a lot of Thunderbolt hard drives that will load up photos much quicker and that'll make video editing, photo editing much easier if you're on the go. More importantly, it'll work with Thunderbolt docks. You could get home, dock this, and then use this almost as a desktop well, at least in theory, because it doesn't really work that well just yet. I have a Thunderbolt dock here for my MacBook, and when I connect the iPad to this, it does start charging. It mirrors the display that I have on here. It's unfortunately still does that in a squarish format. It doesn't fill up the display. I hope that changes in the near future. And it also detects SD cards, hard drives that are connected to it, as well as my mouse or a keyboard that's connected to it through a receiver. However, it doesn't automatically detect my microphone, nor does it detect my speaker. So it's something that is still in the works. And again, it's future-proofing yourself more than anything, but this does have that. Now let's talk a little bit about the Magic Keyboard here. Now, of course, we do have the white one. We also have the black one here to show you that if you wanna see a comparison real quick between the two. And you also get to see the size difference between the 11 and 12 inch here with the keyboards. But real quick, the new white color, is it worth it? It's super nice, it's super clean. I do not think that you should go for it. Like if we're just talking about it just like quick as a suggestion. And that's just mainly because I don't think it's gonna be quite as durable or it's not gonna look as clean in like six months as the black would. Mainly using this as a reference point right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a black line right there. I'm not sure how it happened, but it does not let me take it off. I can't take it off for some reason. So this is just gonna get a bunch of like black scuffs over time and it's gonna look super, super dirty and it's gonna you know mess up the fact that it looks so clean. So if you're really, really gonna baby this thing, then it's gonna look really cool. But even then, one thing that I actually quite didn't like how it looked was the backlight. It just didn't look quite as nice as the black keyboard because the black keyboard gets really nice contrast. You know, that white backlight with the black keys looks really cool. Here, the white backlight with the white keys just, eh, it just doesn't really do it for me. It's definitely a nifty color. 
and very space age, but it's just not the best thing. I definitely would have preferred if we got some like blue keyboard or some kind of cool other color. I get we got a white one to match the silver iPad that they're advertising this year and also the Apple Pencil. But Apple, why don't we have a black Apple Pencil? I'm guessing we'll see that with the third gen Apple Pencil. Maybe we'll get colors or something, but it seems kind of like an obvious thing to give us a black Apple Pencil at this point so that we can have all the accessories match, but you know, Apple just likes being Apple. Now, of course there, you see the size difference between the 12.9 and the 11 inch with a keyboard. Worth noting that the keyboard or the Magic Keyboard on the 11 inch is a little bit cheaper at about $300 and it does go on sale often. The 12.9 inch is definitely going to give you more of a full size laptop keyboard that feels really comfortable and very spacious. It's also a little bit easier to balance it on your lap because you get more space to press down on these sides. Whenever you have it on your lap and your legs are angled in this direction, the iPad tends to fall back. So you have to hold it by palming these ends. And since these ends are bigger, you can palm it a little easier and type, which is nice. However, I can somehow type much, much faster with the smaller one and it might be just me getting used to it over time and the fact that i'm already used to the smaller keyboard but i'm just better at typing at this and this keyboard makes this whole setup right here on the left hand side it's so big and bulky that to me it ruins the purpose of the ipad in the first place i get if you, you love this that's awesome but for me it just doesn't really work and it just takes away from it i think if i had this one it would mainly stay at a desk and i would just open up procreate and use it only as a drawing tablet and it'd be cool to take it on planes to watch some movies and stuff. But aside from that, it wouldn't be something that I would quickly pick up, respond to emails, which is what I do with the 11 inch. I basically use my 11 inch as my laptop and use my laptop as my desktop. So I like it to be this small little tablet that's nimble and quick to move around and quick to put in a bag and whatnot and just move around and shift around. So for me, the 11 inch is still the way to go. Now is the Magic Keyboard worth it? Let's talk about it for a second because you do get that extra USB-C port and if you're gonna use Thunderbolt accessories, that might really come in handy. I think that's definitely a great addition. It makes charging the iPad a little bit easier, a little bit more like a laptop. It definitely is still the best trackpad on the iPad as well as kind of typing experience that we've seen so far. So it's kind of like almost the keyboard you have to get if you want something that's very, just works perfectly with your tablet and you don't want to worry about. The Logitech keyboard I review, I think is a better keyboard. It feels nicer to type on. I like the materials more and it's also far less expensive. So that's an option. But if you have the money and you want everything to be Apple, then you're not gonna regret it, it's gonna work. I just feel that it could be better since you can't really draw and turn this and flip it around and convert it kind of like you can with a surface. You do have to remove it to use it like a tablet, but that's not necessarily so, so bad, but it is worth noting. So if you get it, you'll like it. However, keep in mind, it's it's got a price tag. Last but not least, let's talk about the XDR display here on the larger one. You might have been noticing throughout the video here to see if you can tell a difference or not. You probably won't be able to because Apple has capped this display when using it normally as a tablet at around 600 nits or so, which is basically the exact same thing that we have here on the 11 inch that we had on last year's iPads and even the year before that. That's why when I first unboxed it and turned it on, I didn't really notice any difference and that's because Apple has capped it. Unless you're watching HDR content, editing photos or something like that, you're not gonna notice the difference. Where you will notice a difference here if we compare is the contrast ratio. The blacks are gonna look more black, colors seem to pop a little bit more. But again, this is only something that I've noticed upon really kind of looking back and forth and kind of looking like, oh yeah, it does look better here, it does look better here. And it is to be appreciated. It's definitely more noticeable when you're in a darker situation, in a darker room. And obviously I would choose this screen any day, but they don't have it for the 11 inch. And the screen is not nice enough, anywhere near nice enough to change my experience completely to make me want to carry something this big. So I will wait until Apple releases an XDR display on this smaller iPad and uh, enjoy it then. But for now, this screen on the normal iPad is still stunning. It has enough brightness, it looks really good. And I still really think it's stunning for an LED display. So don't choose the tablet based on the XDR or not XDR. Choose it based on the size that you need, on your budget, on practicality. If you happen to so end up on the larger iPad, well, you're gonna get this awesome display in a larger keyboard. That's really cool. 
but if not, you're still gonna get an awesome display and you're gonna get this nice and portable size. Now to end this, one thing I always say is the 12.9 inch is like a laptop that can sometimes turn into a tablet. So now you have a tablet and I say sometimes a tablet cause it is big. You know, you do have to carry this around. It's not the easiest thing to hold in one hand. So it's sometimes a tablet and I feel like it remains most of the time stationary. Meanwhile, the 11 inch right here is a tablet for the most part. It's something very easy to lug around, to gift to someone, hand to someone, hold and draw, shift around, play some games on. You can hold it like this and it's super easy to play Call of Duty or anything like that on and it's really great. Then sometimes it can turn into a laptop and now you have a keyboard that's still comfortable enough to type on and do some work on, reply to emails and then close up, put it right back in your bag and keep going. And uh, of course, again, the 12.9 inch. So it really depends on what you do, what you use it for, your budget, but don't base it up around the new XDR display. Thank you all for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.